Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode in our series on the Forbach style of Gypsy Jazz. And we already featured two great guitar players. First episode was Fafine Laurier, second episode was Brady Winterstein, and this episode it's Punch Weiss. Some people might know him as Tico Weiss or Tick No Weiss, but I think he himself would say Punch Weiss. And it's another amazing player from Forbach. Great technique, great time, great taste, great energy, great licks, great chords, all that stuff that is typically the Forbach way of playing. So let's get into a chorus of a solo played on Hungary. As always, a link to the original video of Punch playing this solo himself is in the description, because it's one thing to see me playing it, but it's a whole other thing to see the original take of it because it's improvised and um, also it's much faster. It's already pretty fast. I was playing it I think at 270 BPM and it's very difficult to play this solo at that tempo. I had to work hard on that but Punch is playing it I think at 300 BPM so it's much faster and it's it's flawless so go check it out. The solo is much longer than just one chorus. I think I took the second chorus for this video and I put a little intro before it because I wanted to have two types of Christoph changes in there. And if you don't know what Christoph changes are, I'm not gonna explain it again because I've explained it in many videos, but I will put a link to a video explaining what Christoph changes are. But for now it's enough to know that there's two of those in this solo. Let's get started with the first phrase. <laughs> This is the first example of Christoph changes and as always in the case of uh, Christoph changes I advise to just learn all of this and put it in your bag of another thing that you could use on Christoph changes. That's the way I do it. I collect lines to play over them. So this is another really nice example. Pretty easy to find because you have to think of uh, C in this case, right? I know the chord says A minor. But it's just because it's a variation of Christoph changes where instead of going to the fourth degree, which would be normal, we go to the second degree. But you can always play the same lines on Christoph changes no matter what the variation is. So let's think of the fourth degree in this case, which is C, right? Because in the key of G. And then you just start with your pinky on uh, the third. And uh, for me, I would be in the first position of C because, because C is on my first finger. That's what I would call the first position of C. So. Now that triplet, Punch is playing it with a pull-off, but I found by picking it, it's easier to play because then you can alternate to the G sharp here. Like you get the upstroke on the B and downstroke on the G sharp. Makes it a little bit easier. Instead of, because then you get a downstroke on the B and another downstroke on the G sharp and one more on the F. That's a little bit too many downstrokes in a row to be comfortable. So just pick like that. So again. Also notice that this lick sounds like E7 or G sharp diminished, even though the chord is B flat diminished. But again, this is just another variation of Christoph changes. And even though the rhythm section might be playing B flat diminished, you can just play this line. We go to A7. Although, again, it says A minor, right? But it doesn't matter. Again, it's a different flavor, but you can still play it. And I love this line. It's a really smart line to play on two dominant chords in a row. So if you have a 2 5 one, 2 G, instead of A minor, it's A7, D7, G. Then you can play this line. So three, one, two, three, one. Other songs where you can use this is uh, Undecided, where you would have a 2 5 one, 2 c but then two dominant chords, so you get D7, G7, C, so you could use it there. 
or my blue heaven, which let's say we played in E flat, then we would have F7, B flat, 7, E flat, so then you can play it here. Great line, but let's get back to G. So he plays in G. Then we get this. I feel it's it's kind of a waiting line because he ends on this B, but then he's just waiting for the chorus to start. So he plays this because he wants to go to this to that line, but he doesn't want to start that line before the chorus. So he's, he just plays this repeating B with this G string, this open G string, but the G string is just more of a ghost note. And even though it's, I feel it's just a waiting trick. It's still ear catching and it's a nice effect, it's something that you wouldn't maybe practice normally, but why not? And even if you're another key and the open G string would be a problem, let's say you're an A flat, you can still do it, just make it even more of a ghost stroke. Like that. Let's go to the next phrase. really great ideas for major chords. So this first one is a little bit bluesy or it's, it's playful, it's simple, but it's a cool idea and it's very easy to find because again it's in the first in the first position of G. So very easy to transpose. And then we get this very tasteful line for A flat major which features both the 6, the F, it starts there. And the major 7, there we have this A flat major 7 arpeggio right here. Great line also to uh, practice in multiple keys. And then we go back to G, right? Because the chords of Hungary are G, A flat, back to G. And then we get another great line for a major chord, for G major in this case. Again, both the 6 and the major 7 are there, but the other way around. So it starts on the major 7. And there's the six. So I think those two lines are great for Hungarian because they kind of flow into each other. Even though going from G to A flat to back to G is maybe not the easiest thing to play a flowing line, but here we have a great example. Right into that G, uh, major seven of the G. But apart from that, those two lines are just great to practice anyway and to play them just on a major chord in another tune. Like let's say, all of me, we're in C. So now I just stayed on C. I didn't move the lick down to B major, right? Like what would happen in Hungary. And then we get this fake, or maybe fake is not the right word, but this, it sounds like a chromatic scale, but it isn't a chromatic scale. So it's a fake chromatic scale, but it's a guitar trick where you just play three, two, one, open string on every string. Super easy to play, it sounds fantastic because it has all these open strings and, and there's just a certain sound to a gypsy jazz guitar when you play in the first position and have open strings. I think most guitars have a little bit more bite right down there, not only gypsy jazz guitar. So it's a nice effect, super easy to play, it gives the impression of a chromatic skill even though it isn't. Now it's, it ends on that E, but that's just because we're, we're going to, a, to another chord where he wants that E uh, on the first beat of the bar. But let's say we just disregard that and then we would just end on A. We could even continue this skill down, let's, let's say to the low E, and, but also playing notes on the low E string. Almost fits on every chord because it's a chromatic skill, but mostly used on E7. Sometimes A7, uh, sometimes C, but usually it's E7 where uh, this this trick is used. 
sometimes also much faster, like in 16th notes, then it would sound like this. And then I play four notes on the low E string. So I have a, an E on a new beat. But specifically, if you uh, start with the triplet, like in this case, and then play eighth notes, you can just play three, two, one on every string. Now in the tab it says on the A string it has a pull off. But that's because I want to end on a downstroke for the next bar. I think Punch is actually not doing that, he's just playing like this. So you get two downstrokes. That's also possible, but in that tempo that he plays it in, it's just much easier to do a pull off. And then we arrive at the next phrase with all those chords. So here we arrive at another example of those typical Forbach style chord tricks, uh, with lack of a better word. But it's it's something that you would actually only find with those uh, Forbach style players. It's something they cultivated amongst themselves, and you almost never hear it. But it always has the same principle. You play some very powerful chords, and you, you hang on a chord, even though the chords in the rhythm section might change, you stay on the chord, create maximum tension, and then resolve it at the last moment. So he plays this really funky voicing for an A7 chord. It's an A7 with an E in the bass, but then it has a flat nine, very low. It has the, the tritone or the flat five, and then the seven and the three. So it's already a very peculiar or striking sounding voicing or chord. But then he keeps that voicing even though the chords change, right? So he plays this on A7. By the way, um, Punch is not um, sweeping like I am. He's playing a um, low E and then he's retaking his pick to play the B flat and then sweeping. That makes it much more difficult, almost sounds the same if you just sweep the whole way. Chord to change to D7, he stays there. Chord change to G with the B in the bass, he still stays there. And now at the last moment, he's gonna resolve it by playing a couple of other peculiar voicings. Namely, he's playing E flat seven, sharp nine with the A in the bass. Or you could say it's, it's still A seven, flat nine, 13. Now A minor 6, A flat uh, 7, sharp 9, and then D7 9 with the A flat and bass. But, but, but the names of those chords are not really important. It's more the progression towards the new one chord. And I would just remember this chord lick and play it yourself in Hungary. Start there. And then if you collect uh, many of those chord licks, and you'll find them in all of my videos on Forbach style, and you just play them in the same songs, then you will develop a feel for it. It's not something that should have a theory pinning, right? It shouldn't be something that you say, okay, so when this happens, I have to do it like this. No, because the, the principle is simple. You pick a voicing and you stay on it, and you, you make some powerful rhythms or tremolo, and you change the chords too late, and then at the last moment, you resolve it to, to one chord. But I wouldn't go further than that. Just learn those licks verbatim, use them, and you'll start developing an ear for it. So also in this case. And it's not very easy to play even. So uh, you're better off just practicing it like this and then executing it like that also in your own solos of Hungary. That was it for this video. Of course, there is a second half with more great licks. And I will make a video about that later this week or next week exclusively for my patrons over on patreon.com and if you check it out you will see there are several tiers if you join there at the lowest tier which is five euros 
uh, you can download the tab that you saw on screen today, but also for other videos, older videos. And if you join there at the 10 euro tier, you get access to that exclusive video I'm gonna make, but also to some other exclusive videos. And then there's even the highest tier, which would give you access to everything. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. It's also supporting me and keeps me going on this YouTube channel. I'm also going to end this video with a little advertisement for a book I wrote, The Van Hammer System. And uh, hopefully you like this video. If you do, please give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I will see you on this channel or on my Patreon very soon. Bye. everyone, you just listened to a jazz guitar solo on the chords of the tune Ergin. If you are a guitar player and you always wanted to play jazz but had no idea where to start, I have a solution for you. I just released a book called The Van Hamert System, which describes the system I used myself to learn how to improvise like you just heard. The methodology is completely based on learning a couple of shapes across the guitar neck that will enable you to improvise on every jazz standard you can think of. Of course, it's gonna take a while to become proficient at playing those shapes and how to apply them, but you don't have to learn anything else. No music theory, no skills, no arpeggios, no fretboard identification, no ear training, just learning those shapes and how to apply them. That's what I did myself and you just saw the result. If you are interested in learning to play jazz guitar like that and you are in the US, order my book in the web store of jungleguitars.com and if you are in Europe, send a mail to this email address. Bye.